but take what works for you and utilize it to your best of ability because some of us are growing up and you know whether it's single parents or, or whatever depending on the neighborhood but whatever we don't get all these we're not we don't we're not exposed to a lot of things so we need to go out and seek it and luckily we're in a world now where the world wide web you can find everything so go out there and find whatever it is that you need to keep you know feeding your mind to keep growing your mind and, and, and he's 1000 percent right and my other answer would be this and it's a short and a simple answer i feel like we're just lucky we were in the right place at the right time when we all met. We're all still together. We all motivate each other. And who's not to say that 11 heads thinking on a problem versus one is better? You understand? So it's kind of easier when you have 11 thoughts coming in than just you yourself. You're, my, you're, you're racked already. You, have, you don't even have any more thought? I'll get 10 other people to think for me. So we got, we're pretty lucky in that sense. God is good. That's all I have to say. He blessed us a long time ago. All the time. You know, so yes. That's you got another question? Okay, all right. Okay, questionnaire. You guys um remind me of um, Wu Tang Clan. What? That's, that's what? Rizzo. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, you know what's funny is we went to the Source magazine. What year was that? The first time we went? <laughs> we should. <laughs> uh, we, went, we went to the Source you magazine in the video. Right? And it was a, it was a bunch of us. It was at least seven of us that went right. on that trip to New York. And we're walking through the halls of the Source magazine. And they still had the unsigned hybrids. Morales was there. Carlito was there. And they were like, Yo, you guys are like the, the Spanish Wu Tang Clan. clan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. Like, we'll take it. We'll yeah. take it. Because Jamie, I think Obama. I think Obama. Right. Right. He was, uh, was paying a million in that trip, though. Like, uh, what, what she was saying is that. the mindset. Because um, if you look, you don't you don't really want to focus on what kind of life they lived. You focus on the fact of how they came together as a unit. Right. And the Wu Tang Clan had that type of right. mindset. Right. One of them, of course, was the was the mind was the will was the had he was he had wisdom. Right. And the other guys had their own entity. They had their own talent. And um, the way they moved was like water. Right. They right. floated. And the way you guys, if I see that, you guys. 30 years together, right. and the Wu-Tang Clan was... That means we're going to die together. Exactly. exactly. And they have a street of their own, so right. I just want to... Thank you, man. I appreciate it. it. So, you know, you know what's, what's funny you said that, and yes, big up to that, it's awesome. A uh, wise man once told me... Uh, a wise man? I have to say that. This guy is so smart. He's an older man. dude, rich as hell, owns 100 businesses. He's super wise. He tells me that uh, I was running one of his restaurants, and I fired 30 people in a month. And he told me, I know I told you you could run my restaurant, but you fired 30 people this month. Said, yeah, they don't know what they're doing. He said, okay, well, it's for, like, this, this is how I think of us. He does a different part, I do a different part, he does a different part, we all do different parts. But without each other, it, the whole team can't fight. So he told me, it's like a hand. If you, this figure can't do what he does, he can't do what he does, but without all the fingers together, the whole hand can't function properly. So you just have to accept what you got, work what you got, make it happen. That's what we've been doing all our lives. Trust me, we have some people that we make fun of every single day. It's my brothers though, but no one else in this room can make fun of them. That's why you know I mean? Yeah. So it's just, you have you the know, chemistry. You guys yeah, have a right, synergy. Right, right, right. I thank God for that every day. Yeah. For my, just for my, for my friends. These are, like I said, my brothers. Now. Yeah, fuck you, Ezekiel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. Not everything's positive, <laughs> but you know. Real quick, that's the other host of that's Grumpy my, OGs. That's Eddie, my stand up. Grumpy OGs. Hey, that's he's 5'3", awesome. so it's going to be a little hard. Eddie, stand on the chair for us. <laughs> Can you stand on the chair? I know you're 5'3". He's actually standing up right now. He's actually standing on the chair right now. Put two chairs on him, please. He's a good guy. He's single, too. Just saying. Just saying. I don't want to take his IG because it might change his whole, this whole conversation. <laughs> All right, and you can catch him at Eddie the Ass Eater. That's his IG. Come on. Come on. Yes, yes, okay. Oh, thank you. Nina, please. I was that Nina. What were you saying? I don't know. No, no more. My I don't follow him on my team. Yo, I don't follow him either. My wife won't let me. Or I'm still on my space. Yeah. Right. What question? And, and what song do you have on my space? I got mad followers. What, what, what song is on your my space? No, no, no. I got mad followers. All right, right, question. We, we, have, we have time for another one, one more question. Yo, um, your friend. Check it, check it. The ideal country for you. I know this guy. Okay, okay. <laughs> he gave me the shirt. Uh, <laughs> the ideal country for you to actually um, go and actually do like a homecoming movie or, 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 or,
make you go and why? I know you talked about this before. No, it's just, I need to get the people in the shot now. I mean, I want to go to every country. Make them feel one of the top countries in my mind is, for some weird reason, been Mongolia. Like, I want to go to a place that people can't even in the States that can't fathom a hip hop culture thriving there, which I know is thriving everywhere. It'd be Mongolia, Tibet, some of these these places like that. But right. why? Because of the uh, spiritual idea? Just no, just because of the idea that we here can't fathom that there's hip hop there. Right. And just to show, like, I feel like the films are beneficial more to us than it is to the people that we're visiting over there. Like, they don't need us necessarily. They have their own thing going on. It's to show us here that there's a bigger world. I think sometimes in the states we've forgotten that we're influencing the world through hip hop, but. One thing I've learned is we're losing our influence because they're not looking to us. We're not as cool to them anymore around the world. They're looking to their neighbors. Like in Vietnam, they're looking to Japan, to China, to Korea. In, in uh, Peru, they're looking to Colombia. They're looking to, to the other countries in South America. So I, I just want to go to these crazy countries, crazy to us, not to them, but that we don't even fathom hip hop and then it be an eye opener and, and, you, and you just see hip hop thriving in these places. I think it inspires me to find hip hop there and to see how they're doing it, how they're doing it. It, may, it reminds me of how we started, why we started, and, and then we come back and I get, I'm just reinvigorated when I come back from any of these countries. We get a turn inwards into the United States. Yes, yes, yes. And see, like, I feel like different places. every city, see every the, city has right. a story. Because when right. we think of hip hop in the United States, we're thinking of, you know, the birthplace, which is New York, LA that was popping, you know, the bigger cities. But every city, knowing this, because Miami was not on the map when we started, nobody gave a damn about Miami, but we have our own, our own scene, our own pioneers, our own identity, our own sound. Every city has that. Every city has the first guy that did this, the first guy that did that, the little venue, the skating ring that everybody went and performed at. And I think every city has a story. I would love to do that version of Coming Home. Like the different... Uh, yeah. And the other ver the other one I want to do is Coming Home Native America. Because on the on the reservations, it's a big hip hop scene. And, and the reservations, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on the reservations between here and Canada. And I think that would be a dope film as well. I had no idea about that. That genre. That's what I would be doing. That's why you're in the movie. Exactly. That's why I'm here. Come here, I'm here. I'm here when you need me. Yes, to, to put us out there. So I have a question actually. Come as far as. What? I'm sorry. I'm using my video. Oh, you have one more question? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, we got the drinks. I'm waiting for the drinks. We got time for three questions now. <laughs> So it's interesting to me that you say that there's a loss of influence. Sorry? So it's, I'm really intrigued with your saying that there's a loss of influence. And I'm wondering if we're talking about just in terms of the hip hop community, about America generally, and what is the perception? Like, generally, like, there's a one or three things that, about America that is causing this loss of influence. Well, I, I am speaking more specific to hip hop because that's what I'm dealing with and that's where I kind of my expertise is in. Um, but obviously, ever since. 9-11 ever since the Iraq war, the Afghanistan war, Americans are not very welcome in a lot of countries, you know, thankfully we don't scream America when we're going places until we start talking, obviously, but, um, but you can tell that there's, there's people that, that, that just, they're not, they're not welcoming with America, but being that we're being led into, the, in, into these countries and, and they're taking us into the neighborhoods, it's, it's all through hip hop and through the local artists. It's like we're getting that hood pass. And so, in terms of the culture and the music, they're just saying, you guys are not doing hip hop culture anymore. It's not an art form for you guys. It is a money-making business turned out by a machine, and that's what you guys are doing. Which to me is interesting that they articulate that very well. Being outside of the country, being in some very impoverished neighborhoods where maybe they don't even have internet, and they see that and understand that about us. And we're, I kind of feel the same way, you know. But I'm, I'm not influencing what they're telling me. They're telling me that on their own. Like you guys don't do hip hop anymore. You do business, and that's been very consistent across the board. Um, and I kind of agree to an extent, you know. But you, there's two sides to that again. Like, can we be mad at us in the United States 
taking something from nothing and making money from it and how many families and how many people have lifted themselves out of poverty through hip hop. Now, I just think as hip hop and hip hop culture and those in hip hop, we need to make sure that the culture and the art form is not lost while it's making money. So, so let me ask you, as far as from a, a distribution standpoint, how what, what what was your journey as far as getting that out distribution? Like, you know, you you got Dream Champ Summer Gold, and then I hear you had like a, a Roku deal. Like, how do you how did you procure all those deals, and what did you have to do to get that out there to the world? Well, he's the Roku guy. I don't, I don't have no Roku or anything, but um. <laughs> I mean, really, it just, with Dream Chance, Dream Chance was a phenomenon that, I call it lightning in a bottle. We came in at a perfect time in podcasting for hip hop, where, you know, it was something very unexpected and needed. And, you know, I was lucky enough to know a legend like Noriega Nori to be, to, to bring him on board and for him to be a part of it. And we got a deal with CBS through a friend of ours, this Dominican dude from Kendall, who was a podcast legend in his own, he had a gaming podcast called Gamer Tag Radio. He did like a gaming and hip hop podcast. He had been podcasting since internet radio days. And he was always telling me, yo, you guys should podcast. And so when I finally got Nori on board when he was ready, that same dude, Godfrey, had just got a deal with CBS Radio. And he said, do you want me to make the introduction? I said, absolutely. We had another situation on the table. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Combat Jack. And, and uh, their loudspeakers network was a podcast network that was doing their thing at the time. They were interested as well. But you know, Nori, he was like, yo, CBS Radio just sounds so good. It just sounds big. So it wasn't a money thing. It was just, they were just going to distribute. But it was just like CBS Radio. It sounds good. So we went, we did a deal with them. When we signed that deal, I remember telling CBS, like, I already saw the visual side of it. We were already we filmed from day one, but we were just putting out audio, the audio podcast. So I told them, yo, I would really love to have a conversation about upstreaming this to your video, to your visual properties, to TV. I saw it as on TV already. They thought I was way too ahead. They're like, you're crazy. Let's just see if this one thing works, this audio podcast works. And out the gate, it was a hit, a hit, so much of a hit that CBS Radio didn't know how to sell advertising on our show. It was brand new, but it's, it, the listenership was so big that you had to charge a certain rate. So they couldn't go to their advertiser and say, you need to pay 20, 30 grand to put an ad on the show because this is the audience. And they're like, that's a new show. We're not going to pay that much money. Right. And it's drink chance. They're drinking. They're talking crazy. The Eddie ass eater. <laughs> like, it's wild. Like, the advertiser, I'm not tied. It's not going to put an ad on there for 30 grand. Like, so... <laughs> It took six months before we saw one dime. So me and Nori, you know, we, we basically financed that six months of doing Drink Champs because we believed it, but more so because the culture accepted, the culture was loving it. The, the fans, you know, like we were just like, we were fed by that. That was our, our revenue and, and we believed in it so much. And then that became everything because Drink Champs was to be a little side game. Nori was doing his thing, I was doing my thing. We're just going to do Dream Chance on the side. And it just became everything for us. Where it was, oh, we'll do it for a year or two. And we're in our sixth year of doing Dream Chance. Right? Woo! Yeah. We, did, we were on CBS Radio. We did the first uh, multi-level deal in terms of podcasting that I know of, in hip-hop at least, where we did a deal with Tidal, which is Jay-Z's company. Yeah. Uh, Mass Appeal. recently though, right? Isn't it? Is Tidal being sold? I, I'm not sure. Well, okay. we, we're no longer in that deal, but that okay. was a, a, a monumental deal for us. We did uh, Mass Appeal as well, which is Nas's label, yeah, his yeah. company, and then Revolt TV, which is Puffy, um, and we did that deal, and now we're with Revolt, and now we're with Charlemagne the God and iHeart Radio uh, on their Black yeah. Effect yeah. Network. I want to thank all y'all for, for your time and, and before we, we hey, end this game. Sorry, sorry, real quick, yeah. I want to shout out Ira Rasta right here. Oh, okay. hey, 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 hey. He's oh, he's on Dream Champ Production team who was with us in those six months when we were making a dime, so he wasn't making the dime. Before we end this, 
I, I definitely want to appreciate all y'all and all your insight, the gems you dropped for everyone here. Um, but I, I would like to give everyone an opportunity to just plug in whatever it is that, that you'd like to, to share for the audience before before we leave, you know, coming from, starting from all the way over here, you know, your last words. <laughs> yeah, you, you've been quiet over there. What's, what's going on? Is this shit on? My bad. I don't, I don't, I don't speak much. But yeah, um, thanks for everybody's support. Check out Drink Champ, of course. Crazy Hook Productions. We got a lot of shit in the works. Uh, coming home, the exciting stuff of LL Cool J. You're gonna see a lot of stuff dropping with the Rock and Bells deal. So um, yeah, just stay tuned. And as personally by myself, um, Dream Fix Photography. Check me out. The website DreamFix.com. Thank you very much. God bless. Um, thank you. Learn. So thanks very much for coming guys. I mean your story is absolutely tremendous. I think um, our creatives have gained a, a lot from everything you've had to say. And as we wrap up, to put a cap on things, if you can, um, in your closing comments, you've got an audience filled with creatives. If you could give them one bit of advice, just one bit of advice that you think perhaps has been the most meaningful to you, can you close with that, please? Definitely. Well, I do Dream Big Podcast Miami as, as well as I've been blessed to sit on a lot of sports uh, episodes with Dream Chance, so I'm Dream Chance Sports on that level. But I want to say to all the creatives out there, is really just have fun with it. Don't force anything. Be authentic and, and be genuine. When you think too much, overthink, or force it, it comes out whack. Be, the, the, the creators know that it's not real. You go home knowing it's not authentic. You know everybody around you understand that that's not the real you. Um, not to put any shade on last night's kickoff, right? I went there last night, right? But By saying I, that, that's not it. No, what I want to say is that I put on a shirt. I put on a shirt, and I buttoned down a shirt, and I put cologne on, and then I said, this ain't me. They're not going to get what we are unless we are authentic. So be you, and be happy of who you are, and be proud of it. Because everything else you said was so confusing, but that was awesome. Yeah, put that on a shirt, Paul. And that's my dog, and that's Paul. My name is Heckler, <laughs> aka Hannibal Heckler. Like Your name is way cooler than Paul. And thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a podcast now called Grumpy OGs with the little 5 3 guy back there. His name is Eddie. Uh, AKA Eddie Assy, to just disregard that. Uh, Eddie Giggs is in the business. That podcast was solely started because how we are right here, this is how we've always been. We have clowned each other for 30 years. This is just, this is nothing personal. This is how we get through life. Just we laugh about it and we laugh a lot and we laugh hard, trust me. So my podcast is not, yeah, we talk about, um, we talk about current events and whatnot, but if you want the news, you can Google it. I don't do the news. I'm there just to try to make you laugh. We talk to my boys and we have a conversation and we're inviting you in. And that's pretty much what the podcast is about. And trust me, it's hilarious. We touch on a lot of views, but it's not, we're, we're not politically correct. We're not, you know, we're just being who we are now on that show. Grumpy OGs. You can follow us there. Grumpy OGs on IG. I'm Heckler OG. And that's Eddie Giggs. If you definitely want to get at us. And my, my only piece of advice would be, um, I, something I always live by, and I don't care what business it is, this works for every single business. I make money and not excuses. That's the biggest thing in the world. Because every time you ask somebody to do something, they come with a, a different answer, it's just an excuse. It's always a reason for something. Make money, not excuses. That's all I need to tell you. Have a good one. Thank you. I think my mic works. Um, <laughs> testing, te yeah, thanks. <laughs> I would say um, for last words of advice would be don't don't go out there trying to seek relevancy. You know, I, I've been saying this actually recently, like like you're here, you're living, you're breathing, you're relevant. Just be you, be authentic, you're authentic yourself. Um, there's always gonna be haters, there's always gonna be someone that doesn't believe in you. Just just believe in your vision and but see it through. Give yourself time to see these visions through because oftentimes it's easy to just give up after a little bit of effort and you're done. You got and give yourself timelines. Give yourself, ah, I'm gonna give myself six months to do this specific task and project and believe in yourself and, and just be your authentic self all the way 
And, and that to me goes a long way, you know what I'm saying? And don't be afraid to, to, to pivot. Don't be stuck in something. Be like, yeah, I got, don't be, don't allow yourself to be stubborn, but give yourself time to see something all the way through. Thank you. Again, my name is Orlando. I represent the Red Eye District. You can find us on uh, Roku TV through SF1 and Universal. Um, and Playboy late at night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, HBO, thanks. Uh, our podcasts uh, are mainly uh, cannabis friendly podcasts. We, we take a different approach to it where we show the actual stuff. Just the fun times of it, not the BS of it. Right? Um, this is real. Uh, we, we, we put, we're able to put together the Grumpy OGs, um, Splits and Giggles. We have a new show coming out called White in the Middle of Shanghai, which is being filmed in China right now, showing the other side of it. We're, we're on their territory, not, their, not them on, on, on this side of it. Um, we're also coming out with a bunch of different new shows. Um, and the cooking one. We're trying, we also have a show called Cooking with Kelsey Monroe, which we sold to uh, Toolbox TV. Uh, to me, it's my only word of advice is reach out to any one of us, man. Like, not for nothing, but we're actually mad cool. If you guys need help with something, we've never had that opportunity. We didn't have people walk up and say, hey, if you need anything, you need to be put on something, you need some help with anything, some advice, we're here, man. We're actually regular people, and I'm personally always looking for new shows, new ideas. I want to help anybody that I possibly can because I had an opportunity to grow up with a dope-ass team. And every single thing that we've gotten to this point in the last six, seven months that I've been doing this, uh, uh, putting myself out there for the podcast, what I, I was able to land deals and make even bigger ones. So to me, it's don't stop. Like I told you before, no is not an answer. No to me is BS. Whoever hands you a no is because they haven't heard the best thing from you yet. Keep it moving, keep it hustling. Because none of us here would be talking to you guys if we took every no and just let it hit us. Too many, of, too many people are just stopping what they're doing because the person next to them doesn't like it. Good for you, dog. I love the way that sounds. Go. Keep it moving, man. Keep it moving. Let's go. If you need anything, like I said, I'm, I'm here to help. For real, for real. Reach out to me. I'll definitely help y'all. Yeah, all right. Keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all were amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, with that said, um, you know, we have we would like to, on behalf of the Miami Web Fest board, um, we would like to present a special award for DJ EFN. For being our special the guest. Man of the year. And, yes, the GQ sexiest man of the year. <laughs> Cuban, Cuban sexiest man. Cuban, Cuban, Cuban. 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 Being a um, the, a, a breakthrough visionary in this industry Ooh, and. and uh, No, but thank you, Brian. Thank you, Laverne. Thank you, Nina. No, thank you, guys. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Laverne. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Know, take some pictures. Absolutely. Nah, Instagram, and repeat. You know, they're very open. And as you see, very it, it, it is our social guys. We don't care. Drop your social. Wait, wait. Drop your social handles. You gotta drop your social handles. Okay, Heckler OG. Okay. Francisco.com. <laughs> hey, I'm at Drink Chance Sports and I Drink Big Podcast Miami. All right. Drink Flicks. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all to our moderator. Thank you to our wonderful moderator, Nina. In 15 minutes, guys, we have another speaker, so get a drink and come on back. Take pictures, take pictures. And go to Orlando for help. He just told you that he's going to give it to you. Orlando.